So today Jesus is in the temple area. It's the Feast of uh, Tabernacles. And so it's like their harvest feast. So it's like in the fall. And uh, it's the last day of the feast. And he's in the temple area talking to unfriendly Pharisees and Jews in that region. So there's all the Jews weren't the same. Some were, some were for Jesus, some were against. So these are the ones that are against. And they're, they're questioning Jesus. And um, he really sets them off. <laughs> he says that he existed before Abraham. And he tells them that he is God, the great I am. Now, Abraham was legendary, legendary among all the Jewish people. He was the great father of the Jewish people. Um, he was like the first guy that realized that there's only one God and worshiped one God. And God uh, loved him tremendously and his faith was just out of this world. I mean, God told him to do something, no matter how little sense it made, he couldn't have any foresight what God had in mind, he'd do it. His faith, what if God said it as a command, he did it. And so that's what our first reading was about, was this incredible faith that Abraham had. And because of that, God, you know, really rewarded him. But the Pharisees that Jesus is uh, speaking with in the temple area and the Jews that were there, they had no faith in Jesus and they didn't trust him at all. In fact, they're getting ready to stone him and he, he eludes them and uh, gets away with his life. They want to kill him. And you know the rest of that story. But in today's gospel, there's a line here that needs a little bit, I guess it's a very curious line, but it, and uh, needs a little bit of explanation. It says, Abraham, and this is Jesus speaking, Abraham, your father, rejoice to see my day. And when we think about the day of Jesus, it's like the resurrection, right? Okay, so Abraham, your father, rejoice to see my day. He he saw it and was glad. So he saw it and was glad, so he laughed. And so uh, Jesus hadn't even been crucified yet, so his day hasn't arrived, you know. Um, so what he's talking about here is it's a prefigurement, uh, and it's not perfect, but it's uh, Abraham was given a glimpse of God's plan of resurrection. Okay, and so, um, and he's actually given it, given two insights into the resurrection and is prefigured through his son, Isaac. And so the first one is Isaac's birth. It's like out of death comes life. So Abraham, as uh, St. Paul says, he was as good as dead. He was 99 years old and his wife, Sarah, was 90. So 40 years postmenopausal. 40 decades, you know, so out of this impossible situation, God brings life. He brings Isaac out of that. And, uh, and so that was the first glimpse of God's plan to bring life out of death. So, the, so Isaac represents resurrection in that, in that thing. So again, it's not perfect of what happened to Jesus, but is a glimpse of it as, you know, the Bible has all these insights and prefigurements of the New Testament. And the second uh, time where, where he's given a glimpse into to, uh, God's plan is when Abraham is tested by God. He's tested by, God tells him to take Isaac, the only son, the only one that's gonna have a chance to make you know, Abraham a father of many nations and lots of uh, uh, children as numerous as the you know, stars in the sky, tells him to go up and sacrifice him. And he tells him to do that on Mount Moriah. So that's where same place Jesus got crucified. So he goes south before Jerusalem is even a city. And he climbs up that mountain and has Isaac bring the wood. And Abraham trusts in God. He says, God's given me this promise that I'll be the father of nations and plenty of children. And if he's telling me to sacrifice Isaac, somehow God's gonna save him. And sure enough, as he gets up there, God stays his hand. He doesn't sacrifice Isaac, and God provides this ram for him to kill instead. And God knows how strong Abraham's faith is because he's tested there. But again, Isaac represents resurrection, okay? 
he didn't die. He was spared from eternal death, if you will. He was, he was uh, raised up, or uh, a symbol of resurrection there. Again, not perfect, but another glimpse into God's plan of having somebody sacrifice themselves to save us. And Jesus was telling these Jews that uh, Abraham rejoiced. And, of course, Ab Isaac's name is Laughter, you know, so he rejoiced when that happened. Now, like Abraham, we were called to rejoice and we're called to have lots of faith. Uh, we're, we need to have faith in Jesus' resurrection and rejoice in his victory over death, okay? And uh, on the day that we die, we believe that we will be raised from the dead. And that's because we buy in, if you will, we buy into Jesus' death through our baptism. We die to sin. And so we die into Jesus' death. And because of that, we also get the buy-in to the resurrection there. And so as we go on through life, no matter what happens, through ups and downs and good things and bad things, always keep the faith. Always have a strong faith like Abraham, something that was admired by the Jews and all Christians as well.